Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, we're gonna look at, can I actually add a domain to my tenant or organization? Stay tuned. If you're visiting for the first time, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos we crank out. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. I did a video earlier about what a tenant actually is or what your organization actually is. And I mentioned that this would create a default domain of onmicrosoft.com. But in most organizations, that's not very useful. Or maybe we already have an actual domain assigned to our tenant organization, but can I add more than one domain? Do they need to be related? Like, how does all that work? And so I wanted to walk through and just show you how this could be done for your tenant or organization. But enough of all this talking, let's dig into my computer and have a look. All right, first off, we are looking at Power BI. That's not the really important thing with this video. What I wanna do is we can go over to the Office 365 Admin Center, and I can do this actually from either the Office 365 Admin Center or the Azure portal. Either one will work because they all tie into the same thing, which is my tenant. So from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center or the Office 365 Admin Center, either one, Go to show all, and here we will see setup. And under setup, we will see domains. Very cool. So these are the domains that I have in my tenant currently. So we've got guyinacube.com, which is my default domain. That's my primary domain. We also see that we have a subdomain listed here, which is anothercube.guyinacube.com. And then we've also got our onmicrosoft.com domain, which will be present in every tenant that is created in the Azure infrastructure. So right off the bat, my tenant has three domains. You may have thought like, oh, all I've got is guyinacube.com, that's it. No, you will have at least two domains probably if you've got your main domain attached to it and then you also have your on microsoft.com domain. But in this case, I've also got a subdomain as well. If we go over to the Azure portal and we go over to Azure Active Directory, this will be the directory of guyinacube.com and under here, you can do this by going to custom domain names and you will see the same thing represented. So you'll see the three domains that we have attached to it. For the rest of this video, I'm just gonna stick with the Office 365 Admin Center, but just note either one will work. All right, so in this case, I wanna add a domain that is not part of either guyinacube.com or the guyinacube.onmicrosoft.com. So I'm gonna add a completely different domain to my tenant. Before you even add a domain, you need to make sure you've purchased or registered that domain. So you can do that through, there's a multitude of services that are available for you, whether you're in the States or outside of the States. You can go sign up for and pay for a domain that you own. In this case, I already did that. So we will go into and just add that domain. So I'm gonna hit add domain, and in here, I'm gonna actually give it the domain itself. This domain that I'm gonna add is galinacube.com. And no, this is not an announcement. I'm just adding this because I wanna own that domain just to keep it so someone else doesn't get it. All right, so I've got this and I will go ahead and hit next. Then what you have to do is you have to verify this domain. So the way that verification works is basically you have to be the manager of the DNS that's associated with that domain. So this is the domain name lookup service. Every domain has to have them. And so in my case, I purchased my domain through GoDaddy and the DNS is actually managed through GoDaddy as well. For your situation, you may have something completely different and that's okay. Just understand that you may need to go figure that out. And also you as the Office 365 admin, you may not have direct access to the DNS server itself. So someone else in your organization may own that. Just know that you're gonna have to have them modify the DNS, whoever owns that in your organization. So in this case, you have two options. One, I can sign in directly to GoDaddy because it detected that's where my domain is registered. Or you could just add a TXT record, like just do it manually. And so this will actually give you the steps of what you need to add. So if you don't own the DNS, select the add a TXT record instead, and it'll give you the instructions of what you need to do that you can hand off to the administrator of your DNS to go add it. And then once that's done, you can come back and finish the process. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in to GoDaddy and then it's gonna register this for me. I love this, if it's with a domain provider that it understands, it'll just go through and do all this for you. So let's go in through and authorize. It's verifying and so I can either let the wizard do this for me, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and do, or I could do it manually. Again, if you have someone else managing your DNS, they're gonna have to go do it manually and then you're gonna have to come back and figure that out and finish the process once that's done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. 
And then I'm also gonna have it add the Exchange Skype for Business and mobile device management items to my DNS as well, just to accommodate those other online services. This is completely optional, you don't have to do it, but I'm gonna add it anyway. Do next, I'm gonna authorize it again. Bam, DNS has been updated for me. We'll go and hit next and then finish. And we're done, it's there. And if we go back over to GoDaddy, we can see down here that there will be some TXT records added. So we've seen that it included one for outlook.com and it did everything else associated with MX records and whatnot. So this domain is now set up for usage in my tenant. So we can now also see that gallonCube.com is actually part of my gynacube.com tenant, everything's there. So now the other cool thing with this is if we go over to users, I can go in and let's say I wanna add a user. When I go and add a user from a, I add in their first name, last name, all that normal stuff, and then the domain itself, I can assign the domain that I wanna use with this user. So in this case, I could actually say, this person's gonna be gallonacube.com, not just guyinacube.com. And so let's go ahead and add a user. Everything's ready. I'm gonna add this user as a Power BI free user and we'll hit add. That is done. Go ahead and close it. And then if I come back into Power BI and I go to, let's just say I go to a report, come in there and then if I go to share, we will see that I can do And then we will see that that user is listed in the dropdown on my tenant because I've registered that domain. I've created users with that domain. That is a part of my tenant. The tenant can have more than one domain associated with it and that will work just fine. This could come in handy if you have different areas, maybe you break it out regionally. And so you can add those different subdomains for your, your business. So maybe that's you know, us.contoso.com or ca.contoso.com. If you wanted to break that out regionally, that could be done as well. And then also we could go in and we can sign in for, let's go to sign in and we'll do my user here. Hit next. And it understands that it's part of the guy in a cube tenant. Yay, this is awesome. Are you guys using multiple domains in your tenant? Maybe you don't even know, that's okay. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.